Oh, what I wanted to put out there was about the OPSD Commando. It's a line that I developed over many, many years. Uh, literally, a lot of it came from when I had to drive from a guide in Alaska in the summer, get to Washington, then from Washington I'd drive down to Texas to help care for my mom, and then for the winter, help my sister care for my mom. Then I would drive back up in the spring to Washington to guide a little bit in the spring and then go back to Alaska in the summer. So I was covering between Alaska, steelhead fishing in uh, Washington, and then on the way down or back up, I would stop in Montana, the Yellowstone, at Madison or something for you know a few days and fish there. And I might fish someplace else down between Montana and Texas. Then I get in Texas and I'm fishing Texas and one of the cool places was what they called the Intercoastal which is a, there's a series of barrier islands off the coast and you have an inland part or yeah inland there's like I don't know what estuaries or whatever and then the actual uh, what's the sea down there? <laughs> the Gulf of, Gulf of Mexico. Mexico. Yeah the actual Gulf of Mexico <clears throat> and then they cut channels between, from connecting the two. It's called the Intercoastal then the Gulf of Mexico and there's channels so, with the tide working, I could go down to the channels, and when the tide's going in, it would flow one way, and when the tide's going out, it would flow the other way. So I literally had a saltwater river out there, and I would take my little seven white double handers down there and swing, and I caught pompano, sea trout, redfish, black drum, the one that has teeth like people, I can't remember what it is now, it has bars, and it has Teeth, not really weird fish. looking the first time. No, no, first time I caught it, I was like, ugh! Trigger fish. No, 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 no. Oh, you can look it up. There's a fish down there that's, that's got, he's like a big bluegill with vertical, vertical stripes, and he's got teeth like a person. All right? Literal. These things. It's kind of freaky looking if you've ever seen it before. Caught him swinging. So, all that, through all that, you know, if I would have had a specific line to match every fishing condition I carried, the whole bed of my truck would have been stuffed full of nothing but fishing rods and lines, all right? The commando was eventually worked out from being used in Alaska and then shrunk down and modified more and more and more until I found a line that I could take and fish just about anywhere and have a reasonable chance of success, all right? That's the commando line, all right? Short, interchangeable tips, so I can fish from floating down to four or five feet deep with appropriate sink tip, which covers most of your fishing, fly fishing opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's short enough that you can fish it tight, which is way more important than fishing distance, except in, you know, i put it this way. You'll get far more increased fishing opportunities by being able to cast in conditions of restricted back cast room than you ever will by being able to cast 120 feet. That's just a fact of life unless you live on the clear water of the Thompson, all right? And the other thing is the shortness, which a lot of people, oh, I got to strip. If you go warm water fishing, you're going to be stripping. If you're not stripping, you're only catching maybe 40% of the fish that you catch. So stripping's an advantage, all right? That's the command of line. We are the originators. We're the first. Everybody else got lines out there like us now. If you happen to like theirs, fine. I'm just telling you, we're the ones that started it. All right? No doubt. Just to give you an idea, back in the day, I, had, I was with Loomis for a while, helped design the Dredger Series of Rods. But one of my favorite rods was the Stingers, which Life Stab Mode designed for Scandy casting, right? Because I fish all different action and rod. I know everybody says, you like slow? No, I like all different. It depends on what I want to do. And some days I just want to change up. But I really like this Stinger series. One was a 14 foot 9, 10 weight. The other was a 12 and a half foot 7, 8 weight. The 14 foot 9, 10 weight was a great standard winter steelhead rod for casting this on T14 tips. I come back here. 10 days ago to fish on this gadget and do some stuff you know, with OPST. They bring down my rod bag, which hasn't been open in a, you know, years, and I get out a Stinger 7.8, put on a Commando 400, and 
9 feet of T14 and casting this thing is a piece of cake. Never would have considered it back then. That's all because of the command of line. Because of the weight that the command of line has concentrated in it. Never would have been possible before with anything less than a 9-10 weight. Now, 7 weight. That's cool because it's more fun to catch steelhead on a 7 weight, 7-8 seven, weight, than it is a 9-10 weight. Also, at 12 and a half feet, it's way easier for me now. I'm like 65 years old. It's not so much fun for me to fish all day with a 14 foot 9 10 weight or especially a 15 foot 10 weight. Much more fun on a 12, 12 and a half foot 9 weight or 7 weight. Perfect. So that's about that. And whenever you hear me saying the gang, I'm talking about Jerry. I'm not going to use last names because I don't want to get into any legal stuff. But Jerry, Scott, Tucker, Raquette, Raquel, and myself. That was the gang. You know, we were through all of our fishing experiences and we talked and we collaborated and all those ideas meshing together. You know, nobody created any of this stuff on their own. I'll be the first to tell you, you know, even not my making command a line, that just didn't happen. It had to happen with all these ideas and ex being exchanged, all these experiences being told to each other and, and then we, you know, it all becomes a big stew of knowledge. So, mm -hmm. uh, just want everybody to know that. You know, same with Skagit casting. I know a lot of people such as me is the Skagit guy, but once again, it all comes from that stew of knowledge. Without that stew, if it was just one piece of meat, would it never happen, right? <laughs> Does that analogy work? 